Hi, my name is Carol Robertson, and I'm here to talk to you about an article I have in the December 2016 issue of the Science Teacher Magazine, which is the publication of the National Science Teachers Association. I wrote an article back in the summer 2016 issue here, and I would strongly suggest reviewing the uh, information in that particular article, and it talks about uh, modeling DNA and using some kinesthetic models in addition to making some pipe cleaner models that the students can learn the basic structure of DNA. These activities are very good in terms of helping the students be engaged and try and use models to represent DNA. And so for this next activity that I've written for the December issue, uh, we're simply using very inexpensive materials. We've got some masking tape, some markers, uh, scissors, or if you have a cutting board that works best, uh, and colored paper. And just whatever colors, three, four, five different colors works best, maybe six or seven, depending on the size of your class. And what we're going to use these colors for is for the article I've entitled uh, Modeling Chromosomes. You know, these days kids need to know about uh, the genome, chromosomes, genes, the locus of the gene, and then the allele of that particular gene. And so this is a great inexpensive way to teach the students uh, about that information. So I start out by cutting these different pieces of paper. I've just taken an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper and I've simply uh, split it down the middle, middle vertically. And so we have 4 and a quarter by 11 inch pieces of paper. And I randomly hand them out to the students. Uh, you want to kind of mix the colors up a little bit, not let students all together get all the same color. But all the students need to do is just to write um, at, in random order the DNA bases. And we want to tell the students that we're not so much worried about the sides of the DNA, the sides of the DNA molecule, the phosphates and the sugars, uh, the oxyribose sugars, those are important for the overall structure. But for this particular activity, we're just going to focus on the base pairs. So students by now should know that adenine and thymine are base pairs, guanine and cytosine are base pairs. And so what I simply do is have a, a student get a marker, or pencil, pen, whatever, and write down the left edge, uh, the DNA bases, in any order they want. Um, you can even make words out of them like tag or uh, at or cat. But um, just write any sequence of bases, and I have them write them pretty big, so that uh, as the students do this, they, they'll get probably anywhere from 10 to 15, 12 to 15 base, uh, bases on the left edge. And, uh, and so it'll look something like this. You want to make sure that they write close to the edge. And then they're going to, along the right edge, the students are going to write the complementary base pair. So I have guanine here, I'm going to write cytosine, adenine's here, I'm going to write thymine, and just have them go down the right edge of the paper and write the complementary base pair for what they wrote on the left edge. Now, once they've done that, then you want to divide your class into at least two groups. So if you have a class of, say, 24 kids, make them uneven groups. So maybe you have um, a group of 11 and a group of 13. Uh, make sure they're unequal because that'll help you out later on. And you have, uh, and we call these single strips. Those individual strips that a student has done, these are single strips, no matter what the color. But once you've divided your class into two different teams, then you want to be able to have those students in, that, in those different teams get together with students, other students within their own team that have the same color paper. And what they're going to do is they're going to tape together those same colors of paper. So let's say we have a team that maybe has three students with gold, and I'm not going to take time to write the letters on these two. But what the students will do is they'll put their, um, put their pieces of paper together in one strip like this, and then it works best to tape it on the back side. Um, I always have lots of masking tape available in my classroom, and so uh, I think that's a quick and easy and inexpensive way to do this. So just, and it also works best if you get the piece of tape as wide as the strip is. So have them butt the edges together, tape them together like this, and because you handed the strips out randomly at the beginning and you have two different teams of different sizes, um, when the kids make the single color strips, and again, these would have base pairs written all the way along the length of this, when you have the single color strips, they'll be different sizes. Some of them may, you may have one student that uh, maybe they're the only one with this color paper, so there's only one piece, uh, one strip uh, of this color for one particular team. 
Uh, others may have four, five, or six strips all the same color. So these single color strips that you have the students make uh, will be probably variable sizes. Okay, now that you've got all the single color strips together within the teams, and again, some of them may be single, some of them may be four or five long, it just depends on where the kids ended up, where the students ended up uh, with the colors of paper. Uh, and it's okay if some of them are the same length, that's not a problem. But now that you have all the single color strips within each team in your classroom, you want the students to tape all the single color strips together. And just have them do them in random order. It uh, doesn't really matter uh, how you do it, but just try and orient the letters the same way. Again, tape them on the back side. And, uh, and we, we typically use masking tape in my classroom. And uh, you do want to try to uh, do it the whole length of the strip. That really helps a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of take these and uh, put them together and show you the final product. Okay, so here is the final product. One long piece of paper with various uh, lengths of colored strips. And so this would be considered one whole chromosome. And since you divided your class into at least two different groups, uh, your class should have two different chromosomes. And if you used uh, different size groups, different size teams within your, your class, you should have two different size chromosomes, just as all our chromosomes are uh, different lengths for the uh, homologous pairs. And what you can do with this, then, is talk about students, and there are several suggested ways in the article where you can uh, have students do some of their own research, or if there's some information you want to share directly with them, uh, whichever way works best, works best for your classroom. But the nice thing about this is that most kids will get the idea that this is one chromosome. And, and then you can do some research to find out how does this size chromosome compare to an actual chromosome. Uh, we could count how many base pairs we have here, but how does that compare to the real thing? So you can also uh, do something really neat here. Uh, most students will get the concept of genome and chromosome. And then we can ask, so what, is each of these, what do each of these colors represent? Well, that would be a gene. And are all genes the same length? Obviously not. Some genes are longer, some genes are shorter, just like in real life. Uh, the locus of the gene would be the location, where it is along the length of the whole chromosome. But the thing that I find my students have the most trouble with is distinguishing what an allele is for a gene. So there's a, here's a really easy way to do that. Simply take one gene, and show the students that, well, here's an allele. And I'm going to change this bear, base pair from T and A to G and C. And now I have a different allele. And in some cases, uh, like sickle cell anemia, uh, all it takes is one base pair change to make that mutation to cause the disease. Uh, other times, it, the mutation might be much larger. Uh, you can do some research on that, different types of mutations that cause uh, different alleles that might be helpful, harmful, or have no effect at all. This is a really great way to demonstrate for students uh, how, what, what exactly an allele means. So, I hope that you have found this uh, video to be a nice introduction to the article. Again, the December 2016 issue of The Science Teacher, the uh, high school teacher journal for the National Science Teachers Association. And uh, I think that this article, Modeling Chromosomes, will be a good addition to your repertoire to help your students better understand the relationship between the genome, chromosomes, the genes, the locus of the gene, and the alleles for a gene. And so I hope that modeling chromosomes is helpful to you and your classroom. Thanks for watching.